Happy Sabbath. Now I can hear you all. Good to see you all. How about you all stand to sing with us our opening hymn? Because he lives. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. In life is more than living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. Who the calm assurance this shall can face on certain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives the fear is gone because I know
I don't know why I grabbed the mic when I have a mic on my face. <laughs> Must be force of habit. <laughs> force of habit. Wow. Man, if you are not praising the Lord after that song, just because he lives, life is worth living, isn't it? Just because he lives. We could also, I also think of that song, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. Well, let's open with prayer, and then we will get into welcome and announcements. Great God, just because you live, life is worth living. Just because you live, we have hope. We have peace, we have mercy, we have grace, just because you live. And we just say, praise you, O Lord. Thank you so much, God. We could be here today and just worship you who is worthy. May your Holy Spirit be poured out in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to welcome you to the Raleigh Seventh-day Adventist Church. So glad that all of you are here. Are you glad to be here this morning? Everybody should be glad to be here to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We've made it through another week, and it's all because of Him we did. All because of Him that we did. I want to welcome you. We have some welcome cards that we'd like for you to fill out, whether you're a guest, a visitor, or a member. Um, you're here worshiping our Lord with us. We want you to fill this card out, and you'll see some things that you can fill out. Let us know your name, your address, and maybe you're here attending Raleigh for the very first time. Let us know that. Uh, maybe you're looking for a church home. Well, you don't need to look any further. Because you are home. All right, people. All right. I'll let that one slip, but I'm not going to let the next one. All right. Um, on the back, if you have some places that you would like to serve in the church, uh, we have some places that you could check for that. If you have a prayer request, whoa, that's not me. That's, I don't think that's me. I, well, I'm not doing anything. I'm I'm walking. Oh, no, it's on my back. Okay, I won't. <laughs> happy wife, happy life, people. <laughs> yeah. It ain't me. <laughs> my hands were not in my pocket. Everybody's a witness. <laughs> All right. I can take my coat off if you want me to. Okay. All right. It's not my coat now. <laughs> okay. Um, if you have a prayer request, you can put that on there as well and let us know what you would like for your church family to be praying about because here in this church, we believe in praying until something happens because we believe, all right, now I'm not going to let this one slip, all right? We believe in praying until something happens. All right, because we believe that when you are on your knees or you're standing and you're praying, God answers prayer. And he wants to move in everybody's life as well. So just fill that out, and when you leave, you can drop it off at the um, tithing offering boxes in the back. All right, we also have a couple, a few announcements that we'd like to bring to your attention today. Uh, is a youth outdoor meetup at 4.30 at William Umstead Park uh, on the Cary side. Uh, and so if you have, if you would like to go, just be there at 4.30. It's not just for youth, it's even for youth at heart. All right? If you're young at heart, you, you can go and participate in that worship service there. All right. Next uh, announcement is baby shower. For Pastor Joe and Jessica Peretti. 
uh, Sunday, September the 19th at 3 p.m. at the Clark's home. If you are wanting to go, uh, Maria asked that if you're wanting to go, please RSVP her at, at that number there and let her know that you are coming. Another announcement is men's retreat. Sunday, Sep or Sunday, September the 24th through the 26th at Nasoka Pines Ranch. If you would like to go, you can go to the Carolina website and sign up. I still, I believe that registration is still going on. Uh, if you have any questions, you can call our men's ministry leader, Stephen McLeod, and he will answer any questions that you may have. All right, next announcement is, don't forget, on October the 30th, our speaker will be Roger Hernandez. He is the evangelism and ministerial director of the union. All right, and he will be here. He's going to be speaking. And then in the afternoon, he will be doing some evangelism training, how to win souls, how to give Bible studies, how to get Bible studies. All right, so it's going to be a packful, impactful weekend. Uh, we all will be looking forward to that. Also, we are blessed here at this church to have an outreach uh, such as God's Closet. All right? To help people out. That's what church is all about, right? It's not just about sitting here and being warm or cold if it's hot outside, looking good from 11 to 12, right? It's about what we do after we leave here, right? It's about impacting people's lives, and we are so blessed to have God's Closet. And so Melody, who is one of our helpers there in God's closet, she's going to come and give us an announcement about it. Thank you. Um, God's closet is October the 3rd. It's on a Sunday, um, if you're not familiar with it. But in the back of the bulletins, we talk about um, some of the things that we might need. Um, we always can accept monetary donations, of course, because there's... We could buy tables, we can buy all kinds of things, but we also need um, men's clothing, clothing or young boy clothing that's decent, that you would want someone else to be able to wear. Um, so keep that in mind. We have a donation box out there, or you can leave it in the church down below. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, as you're thinking about that, um, uh, just remember that uh, this is a really important ministry to us, and if you haven't ever been there or helped out, there are so many people that come in and only pay a dollar, and they can get clothes and shoes and other things that people like to donate. So please consider this as part of your ministry as a church and um, possibly um, your personal ministry as well. All right, I have one more announcement to make, and then this will be the last announcement. So, this announcement, I just want everyone to know that through much prayer, through leading, through God's leading, I should say, through God's guidance, Tara and I talking and praying on our knees every day, this past week, we have made a decision that we are not moving, we are staying here. Yeah. So I want you all to know that, that we're staying here as your pastoral family. Um, we just feel like through praying, through prayer, through his leading, that the work is not done yet here. And people are still to be reached. God is still going to do something. So just continue to pray and let's win souls, people. Okay, now it's time for tithes and offerings. Sabbath. Um, 
we are going to watch a short video. Are we ready? I'm sorry. If it's much trouble, that's okay. Then we can skip it for today. All right. Um, we thank the Lord that uh, we're here again by his mercies. It's him who has given us the gift of life. It's him who has poured everything. Without him, we are nothing. So today, uh, probably I could give a personal testimony of what the Lord has done if we don't have that video. The Lord is so merciful. He has poured his son, his life to us. It's just not that we give him back. No, it's just that he has poured everything to us. And all he's asking is just to return every, a little portion of everything that he has given us. Isn't that, isn't that the right thing? Uh, so um, I'll talk about a little ministry and how the Lord has really blessed Andrea and I, uh, Sister Louise and uh, Sister Anne, and uh, another other, other, uh, a small group that the Lord started himself uh, 2018, I believe, Sister Andrea. And we really, we cannot say we had anything to do with it, but the Lord had everything to do about this ministry. Uh, we stepped out in faith. Uh, we didn't have the resources. We just said, we have the glow trucks that are out here in the foyer. And we went out in faith, and the Lord started blessing this ministry since then. We have seen miracles through this ministry. He has provided the steps to Christ. We go out every Sabbath through the pandemic. We have never stopped a single Sabbath except if it's raining. The Lord has poured himself, and he will pour to you if you give yourself out to him. We, have, we could write books, and Sister Andrea, about what the Lord is doing about this ministry, uh, Sister Anne. Uh, God has poured his resources to finish his work. All he's saying, be faithful, give or return a little bit of what he has given you so that this work can be finished so that we can go home. Are we not tired of being here? Just to see all these deaths, just to see all this sickness. Um, anyway, so we, in 2018, a cousin of mine spoke to me, and I, I gave this uh, uh, testimony, uh, I think, uh, a year ago, too. She said to me, uh, we were just on a phone call talking. She lives in Minnesota, and she said, oh, you know, I... The Lord has blessed me so much, and uh, even though we don't have papers in this country, I have seen the faithfulness of the Lord, and we entered into the talk, uh, topic of tithes and offering, and he said, she said, uh, you know, the Lord, ha I have seen a lot since I returned uh, double portion. I said, exactly what do you mean, and double portion? Because... Tithes, it's not really understood. It's a personal relationship that you have with the Lord, and the Lord will teach you. We know about the 10%, uh, the, the, the 10% but the offering is normally neglected. And I was one of those who did kind of random offering. Okay, But my cousin says, hey, I normally do, if I do 100 if I do $100 on offering, on, on tithes, I will have to do $100 on uh, tithes and of, on, on, on offering. So I was like, how do, you, how do you afford? You don't even work to begin with. You have random jobs. You're, you don't even have papers. And she started to explain so much that the Lord has done by her faithfulness. If she made $100 this week, she is faithful to give. $40. 10 is going to the tithes and offering, and uh, the 
ten dollars is going to the offering. And she could write, she said, I could write books. We have never gone hungry. So the Lord, in to cut the long story short, the Lord planted that seed in me that year, and I said, Wow, Lord, please help me. Let let me be faithful and see what you can do. What the Lord says is, try me. So as a result, the ministry, he created the ministry. And uh, we, I have not uh, had a day without uh, food or anything. The other week I go into Harris Theater. I fill my grocery. And I go to the cashier to pay and the lights go off. As the lights go off, the cashier says, Okay, everybody who is here, you can walk out with all your carts full. You don't have to pay. I'm like, what? Really? I don't have to pay? I came into the car crying. Like, how can God just be pouring things to me? Um, I have a quick reading. I realize I'm taking a little longer. I have a quick reading here because today is 20, uh, it's 9-11, I'm sorry. Uh, because... We need to know where the loose offering is going to go. It's going to go to the world budget. And I have a short reading here. Everyone old enough to have experienced September 11 will remember that day. One of the most tragic events in the history of the United States happened when two planes flew into the Twin Towers in New York City. Our world has not been the same since. As the news spread, the Greater New York Conference and the Northeastern Conference joined forces to provide immediate help. A Manhattan church opened its doors for the fire and police departments. Rapid response task forces meetings met in the church boards. Various Sabbath school classes gave police officers and the fire department personnel a safe place to sleep between the shifts. The church location provided quick access to ground zero. Church cooks worked in the fellowship hall to prepare food for the emergency workers. On the Hudson River Park Pier, community services departments worked to help unload essential supplies needed at the site of the tragedy. In our uncertain world, we never know when our gifts to the world budget along with the gifts of time and effort, will be needed. God can accomplish great things for his glory when his people commit their lives and resources to him. The Bible says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Matthew eighteen twenty. Let us work together to impact the world for Christ. May God bless us as we return faithfully. Prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for pouring your son to us. And through his blood, we are saved, Father, by faith. We want to recognize this moment when we are going to return everything, Father, that you've given us and you've only asked for a small portion. Father, we ask that you help us to be faithful as you have been faithful already. Bless the offering and bless the tithes and even the work that is going to do, the work you're going to do and finish the work, Father, so that we can go home. We are, this is not a, a safe place for us to be, Father. Bless the givers, bless those who will not even be able to give. Bless them so that they can be able to give the next time. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Hi friends, welcome to another children's story. We're talking about another impossible story in the Bible. They gave you a little sneak peek as to what it was last week. Did you guess? We are going to be talking about Moses and the Red Sea splitting. Do you remember this story? 
Do you remember it? Now the story is found in the book of Exodus. And this is where Moses is sent to Egypt to tell Pharaoh to let my people go, right? And Pharaoh, every time Moses says, let my people go, Pharaoh goes, no, mm -mm, I'm not going to do it. And then God sends a plague, something horrible to happen. There's frogs and bugs and boils and the river Nile turned to blood. Oh, so many things, right? And one plague after another, after another, after another, Pharaoh said no until the last plague of the Passover, right? And then finally Pharaoh says, get out, go, 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 go. We don't want you here. And the people grab their stuff and they leave Egypt following Moses. And they march and march and march and march and march and march out of Egypt until they get to the Red Sea. Now, up until this point, they've been marching, the people of Israel, out of Egypt. But as they get closer to the Red Sea, they hear something. This sound hmm, kind of sounds like big giant trucks ro rolling over rocks. Hmm, they look in the distance. Oh, it's Pharaoh. It's Pharaoh and his army. He's changed his mind. They're, he's coming back to get us. And oh, they're coming on that side. Over here is the big Red Sea. How are we going to get across? There's no bridge. What are we going to do? And the Bible says in Exodus that they go to Moses and they say, Why did you bring us out here? Oh, we would have rather been back in Egypt, not here in the desert getting chased. Or we're going to die. Nah. And so Moses calls on God. He says, God, what are we going to do? These people, they're unhappy. We've got Egypt coming. God, help us, help us, help us. And God tells Moses to stretch his arm over the Red Sea. And this is a huge amount of water. Huge. Stretch your arm out over the Red Sea and I'll protect you. And when Moses stretches his hand out, the Bible says a strong wind comes and blows through. And the wind is so strong that the water begins to split and push apart so that they form walls. And the land is dry, the bottom of the sea. It's dry, not wet and soggy and squishy. And that eventually the people of Israel can walk across that dried up sea to get to the other side. That's pretty impossible, right? Pretty impossible. I don't think we can do that. What do you think? Should we try? <gasps> Let's try. Okay. Hey friends. Hello, I'm right here. So I have my Red Sea here. Um, I couldn't find blue for water and then I couldn't find red. Um, for food coloring. So we have green. So it's really the green sea swamp. But that's okay because our goal here is to see if we can blow hard enough to split the water, right? I think that's the goal. So I have my Moses and my Moses here. Um, and and here, here he is ready, ready to spread his, his, his hands over the, and then here comes, here comes uh, Pharaoh, do, 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 like this. Okay, so here's Pharaoh. That's as good as we could get for Pharaoh, but the, the, and Moses. Okay, so the goal is to blow as hard as I can to be like God and the wind. Okay, okay, if you can help me blow too, that'd be great. Okay, one, two, three. Uh, nope, that didn't work. I have, I had some really good ripples. Okay, let's see. One, two, three. Oh, I had a little bit of bear. I had a little, little, I blew hard enough that I could see a little bit of the dry casserole dish there. But I, don't, I, I can't blow any harder than that. Okay, let's try again. Ooh. Nope. Moses, this isn't working. No. It's a good thing you're not counting on me to cross this green swamp seat. Uh, yeah, chalk this up to impossible. This one might be impossible. Uh-oh. So, friends, splitting water, it's kind of impossible, right? Especially with just wind. The Bible says God sent a strong, strong wind to split the water. No matter how hard we blow, even if it was a hurricane, I think we'd have a hard time splitting a huge amount of water. Maybe a hurricane could do that to a puddle, <laughs> but... 
It's really hard to do with a gigantic sea like God did for Moses and the people of Israel. So the people of Israel had been stuck in Egypt as slaves for so long. They'd been working hard, getting mistreated, and they were crying out to God, God, save us. And so God did save his people. He led them out of Egypt. Now, all these people grumbled when they got to the Red Sea, right? They had Egypt behind them, the Red Sea in front of them. Oh, we should have stayed in Egypt. They weren't trusting in God, even though God's the one that just brought them out of Egypt. He had been leading the people of Israel with a cloud, a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire in the sky at night. He'd been leading the way. And this pillar, this cloud pillar, had actually come between the Egyptian army chasing Israel and Israel. So God was there. Oh, but we'd rather go back to Egypt. See, if Moses had found a way to get everyone to cross the Red Sea, or take them a different way, or quick, let's build a bridge, you know, whatever. If Moses had been the one to do that, then the people maybe would have started worshiping Moses. Moses saved us. Moses did it. Yay, Moses. But instead, God did something only God could do. So that when the people crossed to the other side and continued traveling through the desert to get to the promised land, and even once they had their cities and they started building a permanent place to be in the promised land that God promised them, they always said that they worshiped the God that brought them out of Egypt because God was the one that did the impossible. Israel knew they could trust in God, that God wasn't someone who had forgotten about them, that God still loved them, loved them enough to bring them out of Egypt and into this promised land and keep his promises with his people. Now, do you remember our memory verse? It's Luke 1, 37. It's a short one, do you remember? Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is impossible. Nothing at all. Even blowing really hard wind to split a sea to save an entire huge group of people. His people. Friends, God loves you so much. And God can do the impossible. I am so glad we serve, worship, and love a God who is able to do those impossible things to show us how much he cares. I'll see you next week, friends, for another children's story. Bye! another impossible story in the Bible. in life that have definitely take our breath away and sometimes we even wonder father do you love me do you really love me well let me tell you this morning his love for you is so deep that we cannot even measure it so stand with us as we sing how deep the father's love for us <laughs>
his wounds which bore the chosen one bring many songs to Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there. Good morning, happy Sabbath, fam church family. Today I'm going to read to you in the Bible, Luke, 6, Luke 17, verse 16. He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Let's pray and then let's dig into God's word. Great are you, Lord. We thank you so much for today, for your goodness, for your kindness. Lord, that we have the privilege of opening up your word. We thank you that we just have the privilege of having your word. And God, speak now, I pray. Show us the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, some events in life, people will ask you, do you know where you were at during that time? Like in the back, we talked about it before we came out here. And, you know, one event that everybody asked, where were you at the time when Kennedy got shot? Do you know where you were doing? Do you know where you were at? And everyone started saying where they were at. 
except me because I wasn't born yet. But they were, everybody was saying what they were doing and where they were at. The event today that we're remembering, 9-11, we were started talking in the back about where we were at when this tragic day happened 20 years ago. Do you know where you were at when you first heard about this happening? I remember where I was. I was at Southern Adventist University sitting in class. And I remember uh, this girl who was in the class. It was, I was taking Daniel at the time. And I remember she raised her hand and said, we need to pray for the people in the World Trade Center buildings because a plane had hit the building. This was before anyone knew what exactly was going on. And then I was like, man, a plane hit the building. What is going on? I, as soon as class was over, I ran home and turned on the news to find out exactly what happened. And I remember seeing as the week went on, it, it's probably, I think it's been called one of the longest news stories played out in America. I mean, it was several weeks that they were showing it and talking about it. And I remember, as all of us do, seeing all those first responders, firemen and medical people and everybody go in and try to save people in the building and those outside the buildings. We're thankful for our first responders, the people who put their lives on the line so we can be safe. And I'm really thankful for all the men and women who do that, but I'm also thankful for our first responder who put his life on the line for us so we could be saved, Jesus. Just like our first responders we're going to do today, at the end, going to say thank you, we want to say thank you to the greatest first responder, Jesus. And I want to begin by looking at a story, Luke 17, beginning in verse 11. If you have your Bibles, you can follow along, or if you want to read the screen, that's fine. The Bible here says that Jesus and his disciples were on the way to Jerusalem. He was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance. That's what they had to do, right? Joe, stand at a distance. They were not allowed to be around anybody. They had leprosy. They had leprosy, and they were not to be around anybody. I mean, if they walked close to anyone, they had to shout, unclean, unclean. I mean, could you imagine how embarrassing that would be to have to let everybody know that you have a disease <laughs> that would not be good but here they were he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance and then it says um, and lifted up their voices saying Jesus master have mercy on us and when he saw them he said to them go and show yourselves to the priest and as they went they were cleansed but let's keep going so then one of them when he saw that he was healed i mean think about it he was walking along the way and then he just goes oh oh, oh my goodness 
I'm, I'm clean. What, well, look at what he did. Turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at the feet of Jesus and gave him thanks. Now notice what the Bible points out. He was a Samaritan. Verse 17, then Jesus answered, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Now I want to go back to this verse right here. Actually, let's go back a little further. They lifted up their voices. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Jesus, the first responder, responded. Jesus, the first responder, responded to people who needed help. Have mercy on us. You see, Jesus is our first responder. We may not have leprosy, so to speak. We may not have to stand around and, and when people come close to us, yell, unclean, unclean. We may not have to stand at a distance from anyone, but all of us need Jesus, our first responder, to have mercy on us. We all have a problem called sin. We all have a problem called addiction. We all have a problem called fear. We all have a problem called self-doubt. We all have a problem with something. And just like these uh, lepers here, we need to lift up our voice and say, Jesus, have mercy on me. And Jesus, our first responder, will say, I will have mercy <laughs> I will cleanse you. I will set you free. I will forgive you. I'm here for you. I am your first responder. And notice what it says, what he did. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at the feet of Jesus and gave him thanks. You see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you right now. When Jesus heals you, when Jesus sets you free, when Jesus comes in your life and cleanses you, we need to do what this leper guy did. Praise God. God with a loud voice. <laughs> but not only that, not only that, let me show you something else. And give him thanks. Now, the Greek here is this way. He did praise God with a loud voice continuously. He never stopped. And also in that giving him thanks means he never stopped. When he fell at his face, he didn't stop saying thank you. I mean, we, when Jesus cleansed you, when Jesus sets you free, you, you need to shout it out. You need to be singing the song, 
I, I don't know what number it is in the hymnal, but we need to be saying, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Don't make me sing alone, people. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Over and over and over. We need to be saying thank you to our first responder, Jesus, who came and died for you and me. You see, uh, Psalm 107 and verse 1 says this, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. You see, we need to be thanking God because of 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our first responder is the one that when we come to him and say, have mercy on us, we need to, and he is just and faithful, we need to say thank you for what you've done over and over and praise his name we need to say first john 4 8 god is love say thank you lord for the love that you give that you have given your one and only son for me for the world for all of us god is worthy to be praised he is worthy to hear thank you from his children that he came and responded for us because he knew that we could not, no power within ourselves to save ourselves. He came, laid down his divinity, took upon humanity, and died for us. He responded first. And he needs to be thanked and praised always. But I want to tell you this, brothers and sisters. As we thank our Lord, remember the Bible says that we love God with all our heart, soul, and mind and strength, but we also love each other as well. And we need to not only thank God, but we need to thank each other. Because of our love for Jesus, because of our love for God, we love each other. You see here at the Raleigh Seventh-day Adventist Church, we need to say to each other, I thank God for you. You're my family, right? We're each other's family. And the time that we are living in in 2021, soon to be in 2022, can you imagine, can you believe it, in four months, we'll be in 2022. And the Bible is being played out right before everyone's eyes and no one knows it. <laughs> Prophecy is being fulfilled. I mean, 1 Thessalonians 1, 2, we give thanks to God always for you. Ephesians 1, 16, don't stop giving thanks to you. Because at the Raleigh Seventh-day Adventist Church, we need each other. We need each other. It takes all of us to make it through every day. And you see here, we don't want to P-R-E-Y on each other, but we want to P-R-A-Y for each other. You can use that on Facebook, by the way, if you want to. I give you permission and you don't have to give me credit. We need each other, brothers and sisters, and we need God, and we need to say thank you. Thank you. So that's why we're here today. 
to say thank you. On this 20th anniversary of that tragic day, we're here to give thanks to our first responders. And so Joe now is going to start the thanks for our first responder. Go ahead, Joe. Thank you so much. Happy Sabbath to everyone. (laughs) Thank you, Pastor uh, Jeff, for that sermon. We wanted to take time to not only give thanks to Jesus, our first responder, but also give thanks to those who have allowed themselves to be molded after the first responder to pick up a profession as a first responder as well. And I know that we have some first responders here in our congregation. And if you are that, please, I'll ask that if you can stand up. If you can stand up right where you are. If you're a first responder, if you're a firefighter, if you're a police officer, any, anything service member. But also I want to ask anyone that is anyone that is also serving or has served in our military as well in some capacity. Anyone that has served in the medical field. Amen. You are the living embodiment of our first responders. You have picked up a career choice to serve other people. And you have done so bravely and valiantly, and we are so thankful for that sacrifice. Those who are family members of those servicemen uh, and women, can you please stand up as well? Family members as well, because you have, you also are part of that as well. And we want to say thank you to you as well. Church, look at all of these individuals that have chosen to serve not just us here locally, but wherever they are. We want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart. Let me pray for you. My gracious Father, I thank you so much for these individuals, these men and women that have accepted the call to serve. Father, I thank you for the family who has stood by their side faithfully. Father, I pray that you will bless them, that you will reward them handsomely, Father. But not just here, but Father, in the life to come as well. Father, I pray that when that beautiful morning comes and we are all gathered in heaven, Father, I pray that their crowns may shine ever so brightly because of the work and the sacrifice they have placed in this world for your people. Bless them and keep them. May your face shine upon them. Be gracious unto them. I ask this in Jesus' name. Stand with us as we sing our closing song. I was a wretch. I remember. Separated, the bridge was far too wide. But from the far side of the castle, you held me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build. 
it here inside and there at the cross you paid the debt I owe broke my chains freed my soul for the first time I had a hope thank you Jesus for the blood applied thank you Jesus it have washed me white thank you Jesus you have saved my life brought me from the darkness into tomb of sin you were buried for three days and then you walk right out again and now death no end for I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb thank you Great are you, Lord. And just like the leper that was healed, Father, may we praise your name continuously. For you have healed us. May we say thank you every day because you have healed us. You are our first responder. You came and walked among us and died for us, rose again on the third day, and is now in heaven as our intercessor. And one day soon and very soon, you're coming back to respond again, to rescue us, Lord. I just pray, Father, that every one of us here listening 
that we will respond to your mercy and love that you shower upon us right now. The grace that you give us Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus. It has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus. You have saved